Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's Friday again, time for Facebook Friday. Let's see, make sure I'm in the right place. Let's see, I think we are. All right, good, make sure my volume is down. I hope you guys have had a good week. It has been a crazy week here. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, but we're gonna have some fun for the next hour, tricks and treats. I've saved the last Halloween set. Uh, the best one for last. I love this tricks and treats. And we're going to make three Halloween treats, three uh, treat holders. And then I have a couple of bonus things to show you as well. Um, I have a whole bunch of things to show you over here, like a lot. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around so that we can get to it. And um, let me think how I want to do this. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to move the camera down. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you guys had a good week. Let's see. Uh-oh, what did I just do? Nope. Okay, hold on, hold on. Something's happening. There we go, there we go. Suddenly it wanted me to invite all of you to go live with me. I don't think you guys want to do that, do you? <laughs> I know I don't want to go live when somebody else is live. No, thank you. All right, so good to see you guys. Wow, it looks kind of weird. Like it's tilted kind of funny or something. I don't know. Um, this week, I have a lot of things going. Hold on, let me put this over here. I've been working on Club Create, New Color Club, The Retreat, um, the Oh Holy Night Class, um, Facebook Live. I've been working on a ton of stuff. Busy, busy, busy. Um, I hope you guys took advantage of that free shipping. It was really fun um, and a surprise. It was awesome. Okay, let's just run through all these things. First, the All-Star Tutorial Bundle this month features lace shops. Um, you know, the stamp set, let's go shopping. And this is a really good one. They're all good. I say that every month. 12 video tutorials designed by 12 different Stampin' Up! demonstrators. Um, you get it free if you spend $50 and I'm pretty behind. If you have ordered with me during free shipping, I haven't sent it to you. I will do that this afternoon, but you can earn it for free. Still, you have till the end of the month, um, $50, um, at stampinup.com and I will send this to you for free. It's also for sale in my PDF store for $15. That's so cute. There are some really, really cute things in here. Um, they're all designed by different demonstrators. I designed one and it's a little a little store uh, box. Wouldn't these be cute? A bunch of them with all the little stores and the paper. I love that paper, it's so cute. Okay, so there's that. Oh Holy Night class to go, still open for registration. Um, lots of this is on back order, <laughs> of course. Uh, but that's okay, I've been ordering. Um, I actually, order every couple of days for different things that are going on. So I'm just always adding. Um, when I look to see who's registered, I add, um, and I'm watching, I'm stalking that inventory list. The ribbon in particular right now is out of stock, but it's gonna come back in time. Um, I'm gonna actually start working on getting this class prepped next week. Um, so if you would like to get this class to go, it is uh, $45 without the bundles. Okay, there's two different bundles used for this class. Um, I think I actually am missing one of them here. Yes, the um, Night Divine bundle. I used it earlier this week, so it's not in here. Um, so you'll need both of those bundles, but the kit includes a bunch of product and six fun folds, um, as well as ribbon and uh, the sequins, which are also now on back order. Um, but don't worry, I'm gonna make it good. I'm gonna make it, uh, work for you guys and you'll have fun with this class. The deadline for this is the 24th and my goal is to ship it November 3rd. Um, what else was I gonna say? It The PDF only option is in my PDF store for $15 and my Sweet Stampede, you guys, my downline, um, you get the kit for $22, okay? Um, I have emailed this link out multiple, it's always in my emails that go out on my email list so if you have any of those, go back. You can find the link there or just email me for the link. We're not allowed to put those links on social media or blogs. So you have to actually, I can send it through email. I just can't post it. I know, rules, rules. Um, I wanted to let you guys know the, the, the Hanukkah stamp set, the Celebrate the Magic. 
It's an online exclusive and it is back in stock. So those of you who've been waiting for it, it's a really good set. Um, interesting story behind this. When it first came out, um, there was some, um, what would you say, negative feedback. It wasn't quite right. So Stampin' Up! pulled it and they pulled in some demonstrators for a focus group and they redid the stamp set and now it's awesome. So I like that. I like that they were like, okay, we acknowledge that we didn't do it right the first time, so let us fix it, and they did. So it's now available if you are looking for a Hanukkah stamp set in the online store. The item number is 165131. But if you click on what's new at the top at stampinup.com, it's one of the first things listed. Um, Club Create for next month features the Merriest Trees bundle. There will be four cards and a treat box in it. Um, club Create is my subscription club. Uh, once a month, I send a kit. Uh, it has about $20 in product, like maybe half a pack of paper and some embellishments. Um, it varies. Like this month's Club Create kit is getting a full pack of paper and the two bolts of ribbon. So it just varies each month. But there's always five projects, a video and a PDF, and shipping is all included for $45. Um, when you sign up, it's a, a subscription, so it's a reoccurring payment, but you can cancel it anytime. There's no commitment. If you stay for six months, you actually get a product bonus from me, $25. Um, you get to pick out in product of your choice to be sent with your sixth month kit. Okay, so Club Create uh, tab at the top of my blog if you'd like to subscribe for November's kit. All right, we'll move that over here. And, um, okay, retreat, retreat to go. I don't really want to show you guys. It's very, I want it to be a surprise. There are nine projects in this year's retreat to go featuring Joy of, Noe Joy of Noel and Christmas classics. There are still plenty of spots left. I upped my numbers this year, um, because I, I hate when you guys are sad because you missed out on it. Um, but I've ordered some really fun goodies to go in this. You're going to get about $50 in product in this um, retreat to go, plus nine project kits. Some fun goodies that I can't tell you about. Um, well, lots of fun little goodies that I have already ordered and I'm very excited about. So spots still available if you'd like to uh, register for the retreat, the holiday retreat to go. Um, I have emailed that link out as well, but you can email me. Um, there's also a blog post that has all the details about the retreat, um, but just send me a message and say, I'd like to uh, register for your retreat and I'll respond right back with the link. Um, there's an add-on class if you want to add a, another class to your retreat, and it's the Very Cute class. I've had questions about this. I will offer this by itself later on, probably at the end of this month. If you're not getting the retreat, but you want this class, I will be offering that as well. So just be on the lookout for that. Man, I'm running out of ground here. All right, we're getting down to the bottom of the pile. Um, the starter kit, you guys. This month, you have two amazing options for the starter kit. You can save 35% off of the $99, which is like $62 or $64, something like that, you get $125 in product of your choice, or you get 35% more for just $99, which then means you get about 160 something of product of your choice for $99. I think this is the better deal. Um, you also, here's another really cool thing, you also get free registration for our online demonstrator event in November, which is awesome, called On Stage. Um, so that is that. I just looked at that and thought that was a toothbrush, but that's a blending brush, isn't it? <laughs> I just noticed that. That looks like a floppy disk, doesn't it? But it's an ink pad. That's too funny. Anyway, um, when you buy the starter kit, you then um, are on my team. I welcome anybody to my team, even if you just want, I, I hear this all the time, I'm just gonna do it for myself. That's totally fine. Majority of people who buy the starter kit are what we call happy shoppers. They just wanna join, be a part of the group and get the discount um, and um, have early access to catalogs. Um, I get asked about the quarterly minimums. Your first quarterly minimums won't be due until 
let me make sure I'm the end of March. So you actually have almost six months. So it's a long time to, I mean, and new catalogs between now and then. So um, there's also some new online exclusives coming in November. They are not available right now to customers, only demonstrators. But if you buy the starter kit in October, you can actually choose these things for your starter kit if you want. Um, I will definitely be using these. That little fluffiest friends bundle is so stinking cute. And then the garden meadow is going to be very popular. I know for sure. And that gorgeous paper. So um, if you are interested in this stuff and you don't want the starter kit, just wait till November and it will be available for everybody. Okay. We made it. You guys, we made it. We made it. I'm just looking at comments real quick. Okay. So Facebook Friday this week, we've got tricks and treats. Um, is the blog post up? Have you guys checked? Pinkbuckaroo.com. There is a free PDF for you. It has all the supplies and the measurements that you need for the two boxes. It has links for everything that we just talked about. Um, if you, oh look, here are the, I should refer to this. $64.35 is the cost of the kit if you save 35%. And if you choose to get 35% more, you get $168.75. Someone else did the math for me because there was no way my brain could do that math. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to circle back to that since I saw it. Um, but you can print this off, save it for yourself if you want. It's free. Um, and the other part of Facebook Friday is that if you like the projects, you want me to send you a project kit with these three projects in it. They look like this. I send them to everybody who puts in an online order between now and Monday at midnight, actually since Wednesday um, or Tuesday, because I know some of you did the free shipping. If you shopped Tuesday and Wednesday and used the host code, I'll send you the kit as well. But um, you have through Monday at midnight to put in your order, minimum $35. And I will send you a little kit with Halloween treats in it, the Halloween treat projects. Um, you will need the Tricks and Treats bundle, and we're using the Them Bones bundle as well. But they look like this, and I um, cut them on Tuesday and ship them on Wednesday. So you get them pretty quickly. You'll have them in plenty of time for Halloween. All right, the last part of today that I need to tell you before we get started is the winner from last week, Diana Zib, Zib, Diana. You know who you are. I am I feel like I have your mailing address. I feel pretty certain, but it, just message me or email me just to verify. She's winning two stamp sets. Thanks for sharing my uh, video, Diana. I really appreciate it. Um, next week, I'm giving away a bundle. Above it all, I love the stamp set. We'll be doing a Facebook Friday with this at some point. Um, that little cable car is so cute. Um, if you'd like to win this bundle, all you have to do is share the video on Facebook or YouTube and put in the comments that you shared, okay? All right, that is it. Let me put all of this away and we will get started. You guys, I hope you've had a better week than me. It has been, you know, yesterday was one of those days, those terrible, no good, very bad day. Um, <laughs> and it really was nothing huge. It was just a lot of little things, including a copperhead snake greeting me outside my door. Yes. Some of you who saw on my personal Facebook page, I, um, found a copperhead coiled up next to my dead fern, um, right outside my door, my studio door. And I had walked by it twice before I saw it. So I'm telling you guys, I cannot shake it. I am looking for snakes everywhere I go, in the house, in the garage. Um, right now I have flip-flops on and I'm nervous, like my toes are exposed. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get over that, but it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a creepy week. That's what it was, creepy. I can't remember what else went bad yesterday. I <laughs> feel like the whole day was pretty crappy after that, but. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. It was awful. Um, I hate snakes, too. And to tell you guys the truth, that snake, a copperhead, my husband is an avid hunter, has been since childhood, and he's ne he said he's never seen a copperhead, only rattlesnakes and coral snakes. 
Um, so it was shocking to him as well. He had to take care of it. I don't know what I would have done had he not been here. Um, I guess it would have just lived <laughs> because I would have ran inside and just left it. I don't know, but he took care of it. So anyways, that, that was my, that's my big story to tell you this week. Okay, let's get started on this. Um, this first project features, okay, the dies, the stamp set is super cute. We've got a Frankenstein, we've got a, a cute vampire haunted house, but then the dies have the ghost, the candy corn, and this bag die, which is awesome, okay? So this bag die makes this bag, um, and you cut two of them out, and they look like this, okay? Now we're gonna take this piece and cut off the top. See how it has that little zigzaggy top? But we've got some things to do before that. And I just realized I left my water painter in the bathroom where I cleaned it. So hold on, let me grab that real quick. I looked for snakes when I walked into the bathroom. I mean, that's where I'm at. I can't stop looking for snakes, you guys. Ugh. Okay, we're gonna splatter this. Do you see the splatter on here? Let me get my grid paper. We are gonna splatter and make it kind of just, I don't know, different than just solid black. So I've got my silicone mat, which these are so good. If you don't have one of these, um, they're great. I have been making homecoming mums for my kids. It's a Texas thing, you guys. If you're from Texas, you know what I'm talking about. But I've been using the hot glue gun a lot. And this is really good to put down underneath your uh, glue gun. You know how it, it drips glue? This is really good because then it just peels off. Okay, so what I've done here is taken white craft ink and some water and my water painter, and I'm just gonna flick. All right, and the, the more water you use, the more opaque things are gonna be. Um, and the quicker it'll dry, right? So if it's pretty thin, it's gonna dry pretty fast. See these big spots? These may take a while to dry. Hopefully I've given it enough time. I don't know why I just set that down in there. But so that's all that is, just craft ink and water. You gotta clean your brush, so make sure you do that when you're done. All right, so we've got our little splatters. Let's just set this over here, because we've got some other things to do. And I'm gonna turn this upside down, because it's got wet stuff on it. Um, okay, next, now look, I use two different ribbons, okay? And the reason is, is because I'm almost out of this ribbon, and we're using it for the other project. But I have several bolts of this ribbon, and it's just, you know what, let's compare, because I have it right here. This is the black and white ribbon in the annual catalog, next to the black and white ribbon from the holiday catalog. Let's see if I can zoom in just a bit. Um, not a huge difference, right? This one is vanilla and this one is white, but I have found that I can use the vanilla one with white cardstock and it looks just fine. But we are going to color it it's a little bit wider. I believe this one is, let's see, what does it say? Does it say half an inch? It was three eighths of an inch. That was my initial guess, three eighths of an inch. And the other one is a quarter inch. All right, so I'm gonna cut off what I need and I'm just gonna take my pumpkin pie stamp and blend and color down the middle. Now it has a white edge on it too, so you can do that white edge if you want, or you could just leave it. And really, you don't need to flip it over unless you want that white edge to be, um, well, I guess it's a vanilla edge, unless you want that to be orange too. All right, and I've told you guys before, I love to do this to the ribbon because it makes the ribbon a little stiffer, which makes, I think, I think it makes it just a little bit easier, easier to to tie when it's like that. All right, so there's our ribbon. We're gonna set that aside. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need is a stylus shape circle, pumpkin pie, and this these are our um, vellum basics, I believe, specialty paper, they're different patterns. I cut them both out of the same side, and I was gonna do like this, but then I was like, it's too, it's not orangey enough. See, I wanted it to be pretty orange. So we're gonna take our pumpkin pie ink, which is not here on the other tray. 
And we're gonna color the vellum with our blending brush, which is pretty easy. It colors pretty quickly. And you just wanna start off on your scratch paper to avoid those, see how I have a blob right there? It'll, you'll avoid those blobs if you start over on your grid paper. Vellum's pretty cool because it's not gonna dry real fast and you can still kind of smooth it around. All right, so just decide how dark you want it. You really don't need too much. See how that changed that drastically, right? Let's see, maybe we'll do a little bit more. All right, so now we'll set that aside to dry. Let me look at it, make sure it feels like there's a little concentration right there. All right, and then let's put together our candy corn. The candy corn may be my favorite part of this um, die set. I had to Google um, colors of candy corn, you know, like which was which color was at the top, which color is at the bottom. And so I have Googled it for you. So you don't have to do it. Yellow at the bottom, white at the top. All right, I have cut out, let me show you the dies. Whoops. Um, this is the, this die right here. This is the bottom and this is the top. So when you cut out the top and the bottom, put an adhesive sheet on the back before you cut them out so that they are stickers. And that just makes it way easier to put together. Now, of course you can use glue, but we all know if I use glue, it's going to look a little sloppy because I'm not real <laughs> nice and neat with the glue. I'm not. All right, so just peel off that backing. Put that right there. And then on the white, you, it's kind of hard to tell which side has the adhesive, but it's a little slicker so you can feel it and be able to tell. I am um, in years past have tried to make candy corn, you know, like punch art, like put different things together. Um, and nothing has ever worked quite as good as these dies. I mean, they're perfect. So I'm happy to have now a candy corn die that um, goes together easily without a whole lot of effort. I don't have to cut and piece things together. You can just use the dies and they are perfect. All right, so we've got those three ready to go. Little candy corns. Um, now this is our glow in the dark paper and it is in stock as of the last time I checked, which was yesterday. Hopefully it hasn't sold out since then. Um, but if you haven't gotten it, you really should. It's really cool. I would turn off the lights and show you, but it's still too bright in here to uh, work, but I promise you it works really well and it's really good. Uh, glow in the dark paper. It's pretty bright. So I use the nested essentials, um, uh, nested essential dies to cut this little guy out and I'm gonna put the first two like this kind of you know leaning out and then I'm gonna put two dimensionals stacked right there for this one so it'll be a little bit taller than those and put him right in the middle okay then we'll stamp trick or treat and <laughs> Nancy says wow 2 p.m. snuck up on me Nancy, I say that every week. I, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 1.45. I know, it sneaks up on you. It definitely sneaks up on you. Let's see, where's my, I'm gonna use my little paper trimmer. And we're just gonna cut these apart. You guys here in Texas, well, I guess everywhere, tomorrow there's an eclipse. Now you guys know this, right? There's a an, annular eclipse. It's where the sun goes in front of the moon and the sun is, um, oh, no, no, I said it backwards. The moon goes in front of the sun and the moon is kind of far away so it's not as big as the sun. So when it goes right in front, there'll be a ring of fire around it. Now in April, we have a complete, what do they call it? A complete eclipse, solar eclipse, where the, the moon will be big enough, it'll be close enough to completely cover the sun. We have two this in this 
six month period. But here in San Antonio, we're right on the path. We're right in the middle of the path for both of them. It like, I don't know how we got so lucky. So check your area, it depends on where you are. My daughter is in Arkansas this weekend and she, I thought, oh, you're not gonna be able to see it. But then I looked, oh yeah, she's still gonna be able to see it. You're gonna be able to see it all the way up to the north part of the United States. Um, my ignorance, I thought it was just, you know, you had to be close to the path or whatever. But you gotta check it out, okay? You guys, if you haven't heard, look it up. It's gonna be here, it's gonna be right around noon. But in your area, it'll probably be a different time. So yeah, we're all excited about the, the eclipse. Got our eclipse glasses. Very exciting. Um, oh, Nancy, you're gonna have bad weather tomorrow? No! Um, Lisa, you did the Path of Totality in 2017. In 2017, it was so cool. I can't remember where we were. We weren't real close, but it was still super cool. Um, it's really kind of interesting. And I th always think about like, you know, 500 years ago. What did people think when suddenly it got weird in the middle of the day, you know? Like, what did they think? But they didn't have the scientists to tell us. They were probably like thinking the world was gonna end. All right, I've layered all of these together. I used my, um, I did the wrong side. Let's flip that around. I'm like, why is that so light? Um, I used my, there we go, that's better. I use my adhesive right here in the middle and I'm gonna cover it up like that. All right, now let's get our stiff ribbon, tie a bow, and then the last thing we're gonna do is put that bag together. The animals went nuts, Lisa, no way. Yeah, Judy, I'm the same. I totally cannot craft and talk at the same time. That's why a lot of times I, I don't look at the comments because otherwise I would just stop, like right now, to read them. I, um, <laughs> I'm laughing at what Nancy says. I just, I, I, my brain can't do it. My brain cannot do it. Um, okay, so we're gonna put this on here. So stinking cute. Now let's take the cut and emboss machine, which is right here with brand new plates. Oh, don't you love brand new plates? When I filmed these videos yesterday, um, for YouTube, I had old nasty plates and I mean, they were so warped that my, I was having a hard time getting the things to stay. And I was like, Erica, you have new plates, go open them up. It's hard to do that sometimes. All right, I've got both the bags here stacked and I am gonna use my post-it tape. I checked post-it tape this week during Amazon's Prime days to see if it was on sale and it was only like 6% on sale. I was hoping it'd be 50% and then we could all st stock up. Look, my, uh, my white is not quite dry. Not quite dry. All right, let's look and see how cute this looks. Carefully pull that and Ta-da! Very cute. All right, now let's just burnish these real quick. And we'll put the adhesive. I'm gonna take my um, tear and tape and put one right here. And one right here. So tear and tape's good because it fits perfectly in here. I can get it undone. And we'll put this right here. You guys, my youngest daughter last night got a homecoming proposal. Have you guys seen this? these young kids these days. It didn't happen when I was in high school, but they like make a big deal out of asking someone to the dance for prom. They call them prom posals. Well, my two older girls have never had a big prom posal or home, whatever. But my youngest one, the freshman, went to a football game last night with a new boy that she met and he'd made this whole elaborate thing. Like we were all shocked. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess she was. He got her a giant teddy bear and made this huge poster and this these flowers. So when she came home, we were like, what? It was really funny. All right, so the last thing, I know I'm talking too much. <laughs> the last thing is to fold up the bottom. You know, if you've got to make a lot of treats, this is this is the way to go because this is really pretty easy. Um, I always love when my girls get flowers from boys because then I get to put them in my kitchen. And so I always laugh and say, I'm so glad your boyfriend brought me flowers. So now I have a beautiful bouquet of pink roses in my kitchen. <laughs> Thank you, freshman boy who asked my daughter to homecoming. She's excited. She was excited. She's um, pretty social, that one. Pretty social. All right, we've got our bag together, and we are going to just put that right there. If you hand out bags at your house, if you're one of those fun people who hand out bags of candy to trick-or-treaters, how cute would these be, right? Super cute. Let me get my candy. Where did I put it? Oh, hello. It's right here. You know, the saying, if it was a snake, it would have bit you, has all new meaning, you guys. <laughs> I said it last night to my daughter, and I was like, ooh, because that snake almost could have bit me yesterday. It was that close. I don't think I'm gonna be saying that anymore. Ugh. All right, there you go, you guys. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. As a lunch lady, pep rally days suck. Why, Lisa, it's just crazy and wild. Are you in a high school? Um, well, you know, my oldest one is super social, but her boyfriend was much older. He was out of high school when she became a junior, so it never, I don't know, she never had that, but I don't know. I don't know. I was worried middle sister would be kind of jealous when she came home. I was like, uh-oh. Is there going to be some sister jealousy? But there wasn't. She was fine. All right. Let's move over to our next project. Let me clean up just a bit. Get all of this out of the way. You know, it's a lot of pressure, I think, for boys these days um, to make a big elaborate promposal. She did say it was a little, like, embarrassing because, you know, everybody looks and his dad had a camera and, you know, I mean, I would think for boys, for teenage boys, that's a whole heck of a lot of pressure. You know? I don't know. Feels like it to me. All right, our next one. This one is going to use more of the bag of bones. Really the only thing, <laughs> really the only thing from tricks, tricks and Treats is the ghost. Everything else is from bag of bones. Um, this die right here is really fun. I, this is like a tombstone, I guess. It kind of, you know what it kind of looks like to me in Louisiana, the above ground, um, graveyards, they have the crypts. That's kind of what that looks like to me. Like you would open the door and go in. Very creepy. So we're going to make a look slider, a little slider tombstone, I don't know, coffin box, whatever you want to call it. Now, I designed this to hold the Hershey fangs. I was going to use the vampire guy, but I ended up using the ghost. Maybe I should have traded him out for the vampire guy since they're fangs. But we also use these cookies and cream bars to make cookies and cream cookies last week. So literally, I have no more of these bars left. But yesterday, I played around a little bit and found that a Snickers fits in here perfectly too, okay? This is a slider box like we've made, we made what, two weeks ago? Or was that even last week that we made a larger slider box? And this is the same except different. <laughs> it's the same except different. It's smaller, okay? Um, the um, measurements, okay, now I'm reading them. The HOCO proposals are themed and so elaborate, very creative. Erin, yeah, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, boys really aren't, you know, all that creative, right? I mean, okay, I don't mean that ugly. I just mean like that seems like more of like a girl thing. Like, ooh, let's make a big poster and buy some things. And so now the boys have that pressure on them. I feel, I feel kind of bad for them. Okay, the measurements for this guy is on the second page right here. The first thing you're gonna need for the drawer sliding part is a piece of basic black 
And I, did I, did I write that? Okay, no, no. Okay, it's the second one on here. I'm not gonna get confused today. <laughs> it's the second one on here. Five and a half by seven and a fourth. And all you're gonna do for this one is score at one and two all the way around. Okay? I'm always like panicky. Okay, yeah, no, that's right. Okay. <laughs> And the second piece is three and three-eighths by six and a fourth. And we're going to score it at one, two and five-eighths, three and five-eighths, and five and a fourth. All right. Now we will start the cutting. We're going to cut out the three squares on all four corners, okay? And when you cut here, just cut all the way in to that second score line but don't cut that tab off. We're gonna leave that there. They um, finished our pool today, this morning, and they have put the hose in to start filling it up just as we're getting another cold front come through. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it a cold front down here. It's a cool front, but I guarantee you it's not gonna stop us from swimming. We're very excited. I'm actually surprised that that snake is the first and only snake that we have seen out here. You know, our, our lot, our property backs up to a state park, a giant state park. So I have always said it's kind of like the wild, wild west out here. Um, so I'm actually surprised. Now, somebody yesterday said where there's one, there's more. And I'm like, don't tell me that because I don't need to know that, but now I'm a little bit paranoid. I thought when they started digging for the pool, we'd have some of these issues, but I mean, they literally just finished it. So why now? <laughs> why now? Okay, see how this, this is what it looks like, all right? You've got these little things like this, but before we put it together, and I didn't burnish my lines beforehand. I should have done that. Before we put it together, I'm gonna cut off all the corners. I'm gonna cut everything at an angle. This is just gonna help us get our box to go together a little bit easier and remove some of that excess cardstock. Now, you guys, if you know Snake, oh, Patty, is that true? Come on, are you pulling my leg there? That sounds a little, I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Did he know that it's happening and that's why he came out? It was weird because it wasn't a hot day, it was a cool day. And my husband said he was sluggish which is, I, my, my favorite kind of snake is a dead snake. My second favorite kind of snake is a sluggish snake, I guess. Gross, I don't like them at all. Um, I don't know. If you guys have, if you live somewhere where there are snakes and you have some suggestions for snake, um, snake deterrent, I am all ears, okay? Now the giant wood pile that my husband made on the side of the yard for firewood, you know, cause it gets so cold here. Um, I'm sure that has nothing to do with snake. We won't talk about that. I wanna hear. Hey Lois, I saw your picture of the truck in your friend's yard and it's so cute. You guys, last week Lois told us that her um, friend moved an old truck into their backyard. Mom, if you're on here, you need to go look at it. Um, and it's so cute. She, and she posted it in the comments of last week's Facebook Live. You guys need to go see it. It's super cute. And yes, the pool is heated. The, the pool is heated. Um, mothballs. So I do have some mothballs. But, I mean, won't you have to put mothballs out all the time? Because they're just going to deteriorate, right, in the rain and stuff? Okay, let's talk about what we're doing. See how this, this looks. Now, you guys, if you come back to make this, go to the individual recording where I'm not talking about snakes the whole time, <laughs> okay? And I zoom in, you'll be able to see a little bit better, okay? I'm sorry, I'm just still snakes on the brain. All right, so I've put glue right here, and I'm gonna take these tabs and just fold them up into that end, okay? Yes, I know, Patricia says the woodpile is definitely a draw for snakes, for sure, I mean, for sure. 
Um, and the wood pile just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the dogs are always over there sniffing. I know there's snakes in there. Now, where I saw the snake is completely on the opposite side of our property. So, I don't know. I don't know. And Denise, who is my assistant, she lives in this neighborhood. Of course, I messaged her immediately. And she says, 14 years she's lived out here, she's never seen one of those. So I'm hoping it was a fluke and that he doesn't have friends and family. Okay, now we're just gonna fold these guys down because if they become a problem, I might not live here anymore. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I, I can't, I can't. Okay, so moth piles in the wood, moth balls in the wood pile, but Lois, that'll drive them out. Oh, I'm sorry, Peggy. I know I need to stop talking about them because they're creeping me out too. I laid in bed last night. It's all I could think about. Pool construction stirs up all kinds of critters. Yes. So we were prepared for that, right? But the pool itself has, you know, like it's been dug and the ground has been disturbed like the, you know, that part of it for months. Yesterday they sprayed the plaster and they're filling it today. So it's, you know, been pretty close to complete for a while. Skunks with mothballs, yes, mm-hmm, Lois. You know, I have, I bought skunk, I bought um, a big thing of mothballs. When we moved, I found them, like a huge thing of them, and I have a feeling that's probably why I bought them, because we had the skunk problem at the other house. Now I'm thinking the skunk problem isn't so bad compared to copperhead problems. All right, we're gonna let our little, <laughs> it looks like a little casket, our little drawer sit there for a little while. And then we're gonna put this together. This is the part that our drawer is gonna slide into, okay? And all you have to do is, if I can find my adhesive, put adhesive right here like this and fold it over and fold it over and it'll be a perfect match and you've got a tunnel, okay? Now, I, my idea for this project is I wanted this to like pull, you know, like it pulls the, the slider like that, right? Because you could grab onto this. But I found that this is too short. I made the box for that certain candy, so it was too short. So what I decided to do was like make a little faux piece on the bottom, okay? So we're gonna put the tombstone up here with a little top kind of hanging over so you can grab it. And then I've got a piece of our fun Halloween paper and we'll just put that at the bottom so you don't see that part. Okay, it's a little, just a little kind of a, a cheat, making it look like it's longer than it is. All right, so we'll put that right there. And then I have cut out a white fence I don't know why I'm using these when I have these right here. And the feds is tricky to, to stick down. Um, if you're gonna stick it flat, use adhesive sheets, but I wanted it to be popped up a little bit. So we're gonna put one dimensional right there and we're gonna cover that up with our tag. And the tag, the sentiment is from also them bones. Is that what it's called? them bones bag of bones the paper is called them bones bag of bones thanks anita um oh my gosh peggy i live in california i had a giant rattlesnake in my yard right before a birthday party for one of my kids i walked by him several times before that sounds just like me and shrieking for my husband luckily he was the only one in 45 years oh okay well that makes me very happy only one in 45 years Okay, well maybe, you know, that's it, we're done. We've had our one. But for it to be something so kind of rare, you know? I don't know, I don't know, I don't like it. All right, put that over your, put that over your dimensional to hide it. And then the ghost, of course, we have cut them out of glow-in-the-dark paper too. So they will glow in the dark when you hand them out Halloween night. And we'll put these guys coming out from behind the fence. Aren't they cute? Um, we also have scorpions and tarantulas. Don't you want to move here, guys? Yeah. <laughs> scorpions, I don't like. Tarantulas, I don't mind so much. But scorpions, I don't like at all. See how that slid right in? Boop, so cute. 
Last but not least, we're gonna get that ribbon and make a little tiny knot. Thanks, Nancy. Halloween, I Halloween treats are fun. I'm not like a huge, like spooky, scary Halloween person. I love pumpkins, so I just in turn like Halloween. Um, but these are kind of cute, spooky. You know, these are these are cute. The little smiley ghost, the smiling vampire. They're cute. As cute as a ghost or a vampire could be. All right, let's put this little knot. I just did a little knot so we wouldn't cover up too much. And there you go. All right, so these are a little more complicated than, than the others. Not terribly, but uh, maybe a little more, a little, little few more steps than the other one. Now, the next one is real simple. So you'll, you guys who are looking for simple, you'll really like the next one. Okay, let me move this out of the way. Let me grab a drink and then we'll do our last project. Oh, I was also gonna show you these. Um, I have a box right here. Um, I found these at Target. So if you're looking for something non-candy-ish, um, these little Nature Valley minis, and they do fit in here. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but I think that they would be fine too. See, maybe, yeah, like that, okay? And now that can just sit out and I'll eat it later. Okay, last but not least, let me move, whoops, let me move these things out of the way. We don't need this. What else can I move? We don't need this. All right, now where's my Diet Coke? Okay. Now, Okay, this is designed for these candies, so I have to show you the candies right here. Also at Target. Target had this new line. It's their brand. I mean, these are Target brand, favorite day, I guess. They had um, some skeletons. They had some vampires. They had, they had like five different cute candies. And so I bought these because I just thought he was cute. And, um, and I was going to use a vampire stamp, which I didn't end up using at all. <laughs> <laughs> was the whole reason I bought them and I didn't use them. But they're these, um, I don't know, they're like, I don't even think they're like fruit roll-ups. It says filled candy straws. Well, let's look at them. They're like taffy with some stuff inside. Okay, I, that doesn't look appealing to me, but the kids would definitely like them. Okay, fruit roll-ups with some white stuff on the inside. <laughs> but they're pretty flat, okay? So, and I linked them today. I linked them to where you can see them on Target. So what I did is I just made a little, um, like a pocket holder for it, okay? So see how they just go in there like that? It's just a little pocket. So these are super easy to make. Now I am using the Glow in the Dark Ghosts, and unfortunately they have sold out completely. But... If you get the make and takes from me, I'm about 98% positive I have a bunch. I don't know where they are. I think I have like three packages of them. So I'll be able to give those to you if you get the pack. That's a great way to describe it, Lisa. They look like filled Twizzlers. Yes, that's, that's a good way to describe it. I couldn't describe that outside part, but yeah, similar. All right, we're using Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky. I went with the colors on here to kind of, um, you know, make it matchy matchy and the measurements are over on the pdf let me look this is two and three fourths by 11 and we're going to do three and three and a fourth and eight and eight and a fourth all right now i couldn't yesterday remember is it equal no this side is a little bit shorter just a quarter inch shorter so it doesn't really matter which is the bottom and which is the top but we're gonna fold it like this, burnish those lines, and they just kind of fold over each other like that. So now let me grab grid paper and we're gonna stamp, let me see, which is the top? Which am I gonna use? Okay, this is gonna be the top. We're gonna stamp a little ghost guy, the smiling ghost, it's like Casper, he's a friendly ghost, um, all over in Orchid Oasis ink. All right, and then flip it because you want them to 
be all the same direction. So then you gotta flip this and do them going up this way. It's like um, ghost polka dots. Mm, I think that's good, okay? All right, so now grab this. This is a new punch that is perfect for this. It's called the Modern Oval Punch. And I'm just gonna take it and kind of center it right there. Let me look on either side and punch like that, all right? Then I'm gonna take my stapler and staple right there on the little skinny part that's left. And then we'll slip this in like that and it folds over. So it's like a little, like a little pocket, a little wallet. Um, I have a piece, another piece of Orchid Oasis and we're just gonna wrap it around like this. I don't think I put this on the measurements, but I believe it is one by, let's see, yeah, one by seven, one by seven. And we'll just adhere it to itself, not too tight, okay? Because you want it to be able to slide. And then we'll take our Orchid Oasis metallic ribbon, matchy matchy. Everything's matchy matchy. Orchid Oasis cardstock, Orchid Oasis ink, and now we've got Orchid Oasis ribbon. Okay, I'm gonna move it to the right side like that. Now let's make our tag. We have, I've got a stylish, no, a radiating stitches, um, a rectangle in, what's the color? Where's my other ink pad? It was right here. Did I, oh, I didn't pick it up. In Starry Sky, and we're gonna use the little tombstones and stamp these across the bottom. I like um, this color combo, Orchid Oasis, uh, Starry Sky, and Pumpkin Pie. They, I think they look pretty good together. All right, now we're gonna stamp the Haunted House, or maybe we should use the Vampire. Maybe we should have. Mm, no, I like all those ghosts coming out. We're gonna stick with that Haunted House. And this is Pebble Path. Okay. I like Pebble Path a lot. That's an end color. So now let's cut this out. Also, while you have your cut and emboss machine out, cut out four or five pumpkin pie boos, okay? Put the adhesive sheet on the back. We're gonna make a thicker sticker. You guys remember the thicker stickers? Um, they were the letter stickers. I'm looking for my dies. They were the letter stickers that we used for scrapbooking. Um, well, we're gonna make one of those by cutting out, by stacking several of, oops, I know I'm out of the screen. Hold, hold on, hold please, it's because I zoomed in. Um, we're gonna make the, the words thicker, so it just kind of has a little bit more, more dimension or interest. All right, so now we've got this, and we're gonna put this on here with this. dimensionals that looks darker compared to that look at that how much darker that is same ink pad maybe it's just gonna fade a little bit when it dries okay so now I've got all of these boos and we're gonna peel off the backing when I say boos it reminds me of my youngest she was obsessed with Boo the dog, the world's cutest dog. Do you guys remember Boo? It was this Pomeranian. I mean, you may not even know what I'm talking about, but it was like this little Pomeranian. And I mean, they made calendars, they made stuffed animals, they made all these things. Well, that was like her lovey when she was little. And she would get it. They had them all different. Boo dressed as, I can't even remember. They, they're all different. And she had, she collected them. So, when I say booze, all your booze, I'm thinking of all her little stuffed animals. She actually has them all in a box. 
she didn't get rid of them when we moved. Um, I mean, I was kind of like, can we please? <laughs> and she was, no, I remember she would rotate them, sleeping with them at night because she didn't want anybody's feelings to be hurt. So everybody got a different night. She was so cute. I miss them when they were little. Why does it go by so fast, you guys? Why? It goes by too fast. Okay, one more. And then we will stick it. And I, let me show you guys close up. So see how it's thick? It looks like a chipboard word. I love that. And now that we have these adhesive sheets, it just makes that way easier. Just peel it off and we're gonna stick that right in the middle. Okay, and then give it a little bit of shimmer with Wink of Stella, which I think I left off the supply list. Um, well, it's the third time I've done it, Nancy. The first time I, I fumbled a little bit. That take your pick tool is really helpful getting the backings off. Really, really helpful. Okay, now, last but not least, let's get our ghosts and have them coming out like from the windows and from, from the back of the house, coming out this way. And maybe we need one more up here, flying away. No, that's not right. Let's see, where should we put it? Oh, we need one down here coming out the door. Let's have him going this way. Okay, and then I forgot to do this yesterday. I also added um, some of these gray classic matte dots. I forgot to do this on my YouTube recording for the just the individual video. So add a few little dots. And then all you have to do is add it to the belly band. Okay, you want it to slide off with a belly band. So just put that right there and see how it slides. There you have it. I like that project because I like those colors and it's easy, easy, peasy, breezy, right? All right, let's look at them all. And then I have two other projects to show you. So we've got that one and we've got the little tombstone slider and then we've got the little treat bags, so fun. Now, um, I, did I mention that I didn't design this, or no, I didn't design it, it's already like this, but it's not, I didn't make it for a specific candy. Any kind of candies will fit in these bags and, and you, you can get away with two or three pieces. They're not too terribly big. Okay, let me show you what else I have. Um, this box, this, this is Franken, Frankenstein box. And inside, I have two different things. I have the green candy and the M&Ms, they come in that same package of the Snickers. But then I also, in this one, have the Franken Cup, um, the Reese's Franken Cup. Two will fit in this box. I will have a video showing you how to make this box on Monday. And this little closure is a little bit tricky the first time, but once you get it, it's easy. Okay, so that video will go up on Monday and then you'll have four different ways to use your tricks and treats. Um, oh, I wanna show you something. I don't know, is Patience here today? Patience gave me the cutest thing when we were, at, um, when we were in Vegas. Um, this is the, um, well, maybe it's not. I thought it was the uh, Country Corners die. Um, but look what you do with the candy corn. Do you recognize this? This is from my Taco Fiesta stamp set, the little mustache, little face. Brilliant, so, so cute. I should have done that to these. So I'll have this on my blog. I'll share this on Tuesday with you guys, okay? So patience, it's very, very cute. I love it. Okay, you guys. Oh, wait, I have, wait, wait. I've gotta show you these too. These were swaps from, let's see. Oh, this is from Nathan. He's in my downline and Nathan, is he here today? Nathan is, a big lover of Halloween and he makes over the top cards. His are beautiful. Look at all the layers and those are embossed. This was a swap card guys. He embossed all that for swap card. 
This is from Heather, also on my team. It's also a beautiful stamper. I love the little cowboy um, uh, skeleton. And this one she cut out of the DSP. You know, that's the really cool thing that Stampin' Up! does. You can be like Nathan and emboss and take a lot of time. Or if you're in a hurry, you can do like Heather did and just cut it from the paper. So it just depends. You can do it two different ways, but the die will cut out both, the stamped and the paper. And then the other one right here is from Janice. I must have gotten this one in the, it says holiday mini catalog swap we did through our leaders group. And it's cute. Those, those colors also, um, um, Orchid Oasis, pumpkin pie, very cute. Okay, you guys, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for joining me. Next week, we are doing um, Fruitful Blessings. Is that what it's called? The one that has the Indian corn dice. We'll be doing that next week. And then after that, we're moving to Christmas, okay? The week of Halloween, we'll be moving to Christmas. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys next week. Don't forget, if you want a kit of these, uh, make and take kit, Make sure your order is in by Monday at midnight. Is that the right host code? Yeah, that's it right there. It's the same as last week. I carry them over for a few weeks. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for joining me. Bye.